Hello, this is Ms. Schrader. Today we are going to be talking about medieval Chinese landscape painting. My students, you need a piece of paper and something to write with so you can take some notes. When you're done, you're giving me between five and seven sentences, complete sentences, strong ones, about medieval Chinese landscape painting. We're going to start with the painting that we are looking at right now. Um, landscape in Chinese, it's shown with two characters and literally means mountain and water. And so the paintings are always going to be showing things like that. They also apparently are linked to the philosophy of Taoism, which seeks harmony with the entire world and particularly with nature. This piece is a very early piece. It is showing scenes from the life of the Buddha. It is ink and colors on silk from the 8th to the 9th century. That's the Tang Dynasty. So if you look at it towards the top, you can see a horse and some people and one of the people is reading. You go further down, you can see um, a group of people have gathered around and at the bottom you see someone meditating and these are showing various different scenes from the Buddha's life um, and starting I believe from the top to the bottom. This piece is called the Admonitions Scroll. It's a little bit hard to see um, but it is from the 6th to 8th century. Um, in the center, you can see a mountain. There are some type of birds that appear to be flying towards the mountain. To the left, you can see a man. And over to the right, you can see writing. Normally, these types of paintings have some sort of writing to go with it. It's often some sort of poetry. Okay, so remembering that these landscape paintings are supposed to show mountains and water. This piece is called Fan Quan, Travelers by Streams and Mountains. It is ink on silk. It is a hanging scroll. So the idea is that it would have been bundled up and then you could open it up and hang it on your wall. And it's peaceful and it's serene. And it's gonna make you feel nice. It's from around the year 1000 AD. At the bottom, you should be able to see some travelers traveling around. And once again, at the top, you can see some writing. Once again, perhaps some sort of a description or most likely a poem to go with it to contribute to your sense of serenity and peace. As we move into the Yuan Dynasty, we have this piece by Chao Meng Fu. I hope I said his name right. Uh, he lived from between 1254 to 1322 AD. This is called Autumn Colors on the Che and the Huan Mountains. It's a hand scroll, and he apparently did this for a friend of his. Um, he's a bit of a controversial artist because, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> um, he serves on, in the new Yuan court, the Mongols, but he's not a Mongol, he's Chinese. And he's doing different types of art. You'll notice that he has much more in the way of bright colors. He also is doing a lot of writing. Basically, every place where the picture isn't, there is writing. Um, and he's talking about having seen these mountains and how beautiful they are and how much serenity they create. As we move into the Ming Dynasty, we have this piece by Shen Chou, uh, 1427 to 1509. It's called A Spring Gathering, and it has the calligraphy, the fancy writing attached on the right. Um, it basically is telling the story. Inside the little building, you see a man sitting in the doorway, waiting for some friends to come and join him. Um, one friend 
is with a walking strip st stick on a small bridge and his boat is moored nearby. Further left, another scholar approaches by boat, bringing a box of food and a jar of wine. So if you look deep into the pictures, you can see some of the people gathering. But to me, as I look at this, I'm noticing the mountains in the background and the multiple trees that are being shown. Um, once again, showing us a serene scene um, in, out in nature. This piece is from the Qing Dynasty, which is 1644 to 1911. This is called Tea Sipping Under Willows. And it is ink and color on silk. You can see we have several people. It looks like there may be travelers who have paused in their traveling to sit down and have some tea. You should notice in the background, we've got plenty of trees, um, also some rock formations. So once again, showing a concept of peacefulness. Now this is a relatively modern piece. You might not think it's modern. It's from 1921 by the artist Chang Hang K, and I'm probably pronouncing all of their names wrong. And this is referred to as Studio by the Water. And once again, ink and color on paper. Um, so once again, coming forward to the modern era, showing scenes that are showing people interacting with nature. Um, this man standing outside in his studio, he can see the ground below, which almost looks like it could be water, um, the tree beyond. And of course, there is some sort of writing, once again, probably some sort of inscription that is made to inspire a sense of peace and comfort. Okay, so I've been showing you some examples of medieval Chinese landscape art all the way up to the present time. Uh, you're giving me between five and seven strong sentences about what you found interesting, educational, and important. And I hope you enjoyed this.